Hello, my name is Dr. Gary Severance uh, from Henry Schein, and what I wanted to do is certainly thank you for the opportunity to share what is uh, not well known in the world of air purifiers. Uh, certainly a, a great regards for the National Association of Community Health Centers, and I specifically want to thank Shelley Ellinger for inviting me to participate in this virtual show and provide you some information that not many know. Now everything that I'll be sharing with you today in this short 15 minute segment is based upon all different regulations and it's important dentistry keep up with all the different uh, people providing recommendations and our guidance that includes CDC, uh, OSHA, OSAP, uh, and the one that you may not be familiar with here is ASHRAE. And ASHRAE comes into play because that's the refrigeration, heating, air conditioning group and all of a sudden we're starting to look at the air management in dental offices, um, which we haven't necessarily done in the past. But what you will see, whether you look at OSAP or FDA or ASHRAE uh, and OSHA, because we're both employers as well as patient caregivers, we have to look at all the different guidances. And all of a sudden now, since the COVID situation, uh, each group is mentioning air purification, ventilation, and specifically HEPA filters. So, you're getting direction to look at this next in um, dentistry. And I think EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, has the best area we've looked at as far as what we can mimic in dentistry. And they take, uh, and they've always had this, steps in controlling air pollutants. And it's three steps, source control, ventilation, and air cleaning. Each one is a little bit more or less effective than the other, source control being the most effective. Essentially, if we don't create an aerosol, we don't have to worry about it. So source control, which we know uh, really maintains the aspect of using rubber dams, um, pre-rinses, middle rinses, and post-rinses possibility. Then we go outside the mouth, and how can we control extraoral uh, aerosol generation or those that escape the mouth? Uh, that's ventilation and create that ventilation to get these pollutants away from the patient and uh, away from the dental health care. And then air cleaning. You've heard the term air purifiers, whether that's a localized system like an air purification system in the room you're in or looking at HVAC systems, better ways to clean the air. There is no one solution that works for everyone, so it has to be office by office or operatory uh, by operatory when we look at this or community center by community center. And as we look at this, we all know what a great job dentistry has done in infection control since the mid-80s, specifically, talking about sterilizing instruments, disinfecting surface contaminants, uh, PPE, which we've used for the last 40 years, uh, aerosol management, intraorally. But now we have to really step back and say, do we have to take extra care on extraoral aerosol management and indoor air quality? That's the next level of dental profession, uh, protection. And I think it's true that we need to do this, and most of the regulatories look at that. So I know most uh, dental offices probably invested in some air purifiers just for the fact of having them maybe uh, for patient protection, but maybe also patient awareness, and so they see it. And unfortunately, I think uh, we do need to look at a little different than a consumer style. And often we go to one of these centers or on Amazon because I know they're back ordered. Um, and you buy something that looks stylish and is silent. Those are the two main criteria we look at because there isn't a lot known on this. But I think it's uh, important to look at our dental office versus our home. In our dental offices, we are reintroducing new breath or breaths uh, probably every 15 minutes when new patients come in or exit or we sit somebody down. So we're bringing in new air quality with every patient. At home, when it's your wife and children and kind of a consistent uh, group of people, we're probably not bringing in new uh, air or new breaths uh, or any contaminants uh, very seldom. So it's okay to probably invest in these type of filter situations in the home, which over time can clean the air. But when we're in a professional environment responsible for the health care of our patients as well as the health of our team members and safety, it's best to up that category and look at new ways we can purify the air. And in fact, it's important for you to realize that uh, any of these air purifiers are simply recirculating the air through filters and over time they can clean the air. 
but in a professional situation, probably need to get up that a bit with single air pass kill rates, and I'll explain what that is. The way they test these air purifiers that just have filters is they put it in a smoke-filled room or a room with contaminants and then run it 30 minutes, 40 minutes, there's no standard, and they come down to a statement of 99% of contaminants are removed, but that's over time. And so good air comes in and some we're recirculating some bad area or bad air for a period of time. There is something called single air pass, and there's one system that has and promotes that, that as the air comes in the bottom, it goes through filters and a reaction chamber, and you can see how clean or uh, decontaminated the air is, uh, deactivating some of the viruses and bacteria so it's non-detectable, but also running through uh, some filters. So this is more of, of a healthcare professional environment. And I, I think when you look at the commercial re air purifiers, or even those that uh, are offered in dentistry, it's recirculating over minutes. When you look at a system that can do this on a single air pass, and we didn't necessarily come across this other than by uh, direction from WHO. And sometimes they recommend looking at some of the countries that have been very effective. And one of them have been South Korea. Now they had their issues with the pandemic, the most recent pandemic as well. Uh, but in 2003, they had the first coronavirus or the SARS coronavirus issue. And they responded with creating some technology called the virus uh, killer technology. Originally in 2003 and the epidemic in 2004, they created this through universities and government bodies. And currently it's in 370,000 commercial installations in South Korea. 80% of all hospitals, universities, healthcare centers as well. And it won uh, best innovation because what it does is not only filter the air, but inactivate through a reaction chamber many of the, many of the uh, pollutants. And there is no recirculation none detectable when they've done the studies with poliovirus, influenza, adenovirus, and a previous version of coronavirus. It's safe to say that the current pandemic or the virus SARS-CoV-2 is not readily available for testing. But they used some surrogates in the past to look at this. And what you see is a single air pass through this technology, there was no detection. And essentially the greatest number they can use is 99.9999%. They can also look at that at bacteria, fungi, and mold and have the data show none detected after a single pass. So there's three different models that's available to you in the United States now that use this virus killer technology. And you can see each one is a smaller subset, meaning it clears, it's a smaller unit, but also clears a smaller square footage or cubic foot in the office. So you may want to look at this one unit on the left, the VK103 for large waiting rooms, or, or open clinical design, like a community center that may not have too many walls up, uh, or an ortho office that may have all chairs. This one may clear that whole area. Every room you know in the office is a little different, has different air circulation tendencies as well, so it's important to look at it. They also make one that's more of an operatory, per-operatory site, and that's the middle one, the 401. And then a small personal device, essentially, is the Hextio that has smaller areas. And as you look at cross-sections of this, you can see and probably have read, well, I need filters to clean out the majority of the pollutants. Uh, usually they use pre-filters to capture the big ones. Then it can go through a HEPA filter to capture smaller particles. And then even carbon filter to get out some of the uh, volatile organic compounds or smells or odors. But then it goes up from the bottom, again, drawing air from out of the breathing zone and then putting clean air back into the air uh, breathing zone of the patients and healthcare professionals. And you can see then it goes through what's the blue light here essentially, or the, the um, uh, lighting system here, which is called UVC um, and UVGI or um, germicidal irradiation, photocatalytic oxidation. And so what that does is a combination of UV light and titanium dioxide hexagon filters. And as the airflow goes up, uh, it's bombarded with these um, radicals uh, that then can oxidize or inactivate viruses. So by the time the air comes out the top, nearly uh, or really undetectable or 99.9997 on a single air pass. And so you look at this and you can see this would be a great one to have in waiting rooms. 
Uh, you can customize it with your labels, so you can again share with patients how they're being um, uh, protected in this regard. And then they have smaller ones that can draw the air out, well, average size of a dental uh, operatory. And again, we want to draw the air from the breathing zone away from the patient, away from the dental health care professionals. In this case, you can place it at the toe of the patient. It can go on a stand if you have um, windows that you want to um, not be obstructed, and you can draw it at the toe of the patient. And what it does is draw in then uh, the air from the operatory, and then through a laminar flow along the walls and up into the breathing zone that provides the air that has gone through this, again with a 99.999% uh, clearance of in inactivation of any particles. Now it's very important to know you can also set it on a counter, you can have it between operatories, but you do want to look at the airflow for the proper positioning of this uh, unit as well. And then finally, which is a great option for either personal devices, if you want in your home, this has a battery option to it that you can bring traveling if you want uh, and have it clear in your hotel rooms. But it's also a great one for front desk or smaller areas or offices. It has the same uh, instance of bringing air in towards the bottom and dispensing air back into the breathing zone, having deactivated uh, and filtered the air unlike these air purifiers that simply recirculate the air until they get it right. And in most cases this is light and portable, uh, but in most cases the sound level is low enough to not be an obstruction in your office or to your patients as well. With that I just wanted to make you aware it's called the Radicate system of products for waiting rooms, for operatories and front desks or personal protection. And it's something that ups the game from uh, consumer level uh, air purifiers to really inactivating the bacteria and viruses uh, using virus killer technology. It's important to know that every office, every room, and every need is unique. You need, need to look at this from a, a layering or bundle. So take consideration of source control, try not to create aerosols, and then if you do create aerosols, trying to get them out of the breathing zone and into a filter system and or inactivation system. And if you can look at the whole office and give clean air throughout through HVAC systems. But most important is the airflow in your office, so take some time to look at that as well. As I said, every office and need is unique. You need to look at the square footage that you need to cover. The design of the office, is it open? Does it have obstacles that air is being stagnated? Is it an open design? Uh, the patient flow makes important too. Are they in and out one direction? Do you have the head of the patient um, away from the hallways and you want to direct the air away from the breathing zone of dental health care professionals and the patients themselves? And then even having team members create their own airflow as they run around the office getting patients or bringing patients back or getting other um, uh, infection control guidelines or materials as well. So, Everything really uh, needs to be looked at in an office to do this effectively, not just for the vision of the patient, but also for the safety of the patients, safety of yourselves and your team members. And then consider how many aerosol producing procedures you create and which rooms do you create them in. Lots to look at, but I know uh, Henry Shun is there as well as other distributors to give you the best advice. And I would like you to consider taking that extra step of infection control. Again, I want to thank the National Association of Community Health Centers, and we want to be there to answer any or all questions. Here's the contact for Shelley, who will be uh, a very great resource for you from Henry Schein Dental. Thank you again.